Hello. In this lecture, we'll study the solutions of the one-dimensional wave equation. And as we recall, the equation can be used to model the motion of a string that is held at fixed positions at both ends. The unknown function u describes the displacement of the string at a spatial coordinate x and at time t. And it should be noted that the model we study does not include any so-called damping arising, for example, from resistance of air, which would slow down the movement of the string. And because of this, our PD model is a bit unrealistic in the sense that the oscillations in the string do not die down, but continue indefinitely, and the energy of the system does not decrease at all over time. And it would be possible to include models of several kinds of damping into the wave equation. But on this course, we only study the undamped model for simplicity. Our first aim is to show that we can find an explicit solution for our undamped and unforced equation. And this solution consists of two parts given by two functions f and g that are determined by the initial conditions of the equation. And we can first ignore the boundaries of our spatial domain and instead consider the PDE on the whole real line R. And in deriving the solution, we use the so-called method of characteristics. In the first step of this process, we will write, rewrite the wave equation in new variables s and r, which are defined using the old variables x and t and depend on the wave speed c in the equation. And to make the change of variables, we'll need to express the second order derivatives we have in our equation in terms of the new variables s and r. Since the variable s is defined in terms of x and t, the chain rule tells us that we can express the partial derivative with respect to x in terms of the partial derivatives with respect to s and r. And in this formula, the derivatives of s and r in, with respect to x are both equal to constant 1 because of the way we defined our new variables s and r. And the second order derivative with respect to x can be obtained by applying the first order derivative twice. And this way we get a formula for the second derivative in terms of the derivatives with respect to s and r. And similarly, we can express the partial derivatives of t in terms of the partial derivatives with respect to s and r. And the only difference is that the derivatives of s and r in, with respect to t depend on the wave speed c, and because of this, the constant appears in the final formula as well. If we replace the derivatives with respect to x and t in the wave equation with these expressions, we arrive at the first equation on the slide. And the second order terms, depending only on s and r on both sides of the equation, are equal and therefore cancel each other. And this way, the equation simplifies greatly into the form which requires that the mix mixed derivative of u with respect to s and r should be zero. And since this is a quite a simple equation, it has a general solution that consists of a sum of two functions f and g, each depending on one of the variables s and r. But if we now substitute the expressions of s and r into this formula, we get the general solution for our wave equation in terms of x and t. So now we've derived a formula for the general solution of the undamped wave equation. And if we analyze the form of the solution, we can observe that 
because of the way the variables x and t appear in the solution, the two functions f and g can be interpreted as two wave profiles that move in opposite directions. And the speed of this movement is equal to c, which explains why this parameter of the PDE is called the wave speed. And the full solution of the wave equation is then a combination of the two traveling wave profiles. The actual functions f and g in the solution are determined by the initial conditions of the wave equation. And in particular, if we substitute t equals zero into the form of our solution and its time derivative, we can then see that the functions f and g must satisfy the two equations in the middle of the slide. And the functions can now be solved from these equations in terms of the known initial displacement and velocity. And if we consider the wave equation on the full real line R, the solution can also be given using the so-called D'Alembert's formula. And this formula shows very nicely how the displacement for particular values of x and t depends on the initial displacement and initial velocity of the stream. And we can now study some characteristic behaviors of the solutions of the wave equation. And the figures presented on the slides are obtained from the numerical solutions of the wave equation computed with the MATLAB function PDPE and the codes for the solutions can again be downloaded from the course homepage. And in the case where the solution of the wave equation contains only one of the two components f and g, the displacement is a wave profile that travels either to the left or to the right with the speed c. And these solutions include so-called wave pulses that have non-zero displacement only in a specific small area and move along the stream. And in this figure, the wave pulse starts from the middle of the string and starts to move to the right as time increases. And as the functions f and g in the solution are determined by the initial conditions of the wave equation, we can ask what kind of an initial displacement and initial velocity give rise to the solution that only contains a single traveling wave. But this question can be answered fairly easily by simply substituting time equals zero into the form of the solution that we aim to get and its time derivative. And the result is shown here and the it should be noted that the factor minus c in the initial velocity comes from differentiating the expression fx minus ct with respect to t. The homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions we have in our wave equation affect the traveling wave pulses so that when a pulse hits the boundary, it is reflected and begins to move on the opposite side of the string into the opposite direction. In the figure on the slide, the pulse starts with a positive displacement in the middle of the string and starts to move to the right. And when it gets to the boundary, it first gets smaller and smaller, and then a similar pulse appears on the bottom side of the string. And this reflected pulse has the same shape as the original one, but with negative displacement, and it moves to the left in the string until it hits another boundary and is possibly reflected again. The figure on this slide shows a solution of the wave equation arising from a single wave pulse that splits into two waves, one traveling to the left and one traveling to the right. And the solution shown here 
correspond to the initial profile of the wave pulse with zero initial velocity. Finally, one of the typical behaviors of the wave equations is that they admit solutions that are so-called standing waves, where some of the points on the string stay stationary and the profiles oscillate periodically. And the undamped one-dimensional wave equation has an infinite number of solutions of this type, which correspond to different numbers of stationary points on the string. And on this lecture, we've only considered the Dirichlet boundary conditions, but the Neumann boundary conditions in the PDE would also result in standing waves, but with slightly different shapes than the ones we've illustrated here.